academic staff union of universities on Monday, 29th August, extended its six-month-old strike in the country. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, sources on Monday revealed that the academic staff union of universities extended its six-month-old strike in the country. However, the timeline of the extension was not disclosed. This comes after the union held a national executive council meeting on Sunday evening, recalling as to embarked on the strike on February 14, 2022. Several meetings between the government representatives and ASU have ended in deadlock due to unresolved agreements. As of the time of filing this report, the union is yet to officially address the public. At number two, the Federal High Court of Uja on Monday refused to grant the extradition application filed by the federal government for the permission to extradite the suspended DCP Abakiari to the United States. In his judgment, Justice Inyang Kuo said the extradition request lacked merit and is liable to dismissal. The U.S. authorities had applied to the federal government for Kiari's extradition about its alleged link with Instagram celebrity Ramon Abbas alias Hush Puppy. The suspended DCP is also facing a criminal trial on allegations of drug deals filed against him and others by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. At number three, police authorities have launched a probe into the mysterious death of six persons in Eka, Utara, a Dani community in Enugu state. They reportedly died in an unclear circumstance on Saturday in the Uzo, Uwani local government area of Enugu state. Police Public Relations Officer Daniel Ndukwe stated that the victims were conveyed to the hospital where six of them were confirmed dead and deposited in the mortuary for preservation and autopsy. One of the deceased is Obi Nadike, a 31-year-old who attended his own traditional marriage ceremony at Oboloi K in Udenu Council area on August 26, with his relatives and other victims of the incident. At number four, the Federal High Court in Lagos has stopped President Muhammad Bari and the National Broadcasting Commission from revoking the licenses of some broadcast stations in the country and shutting down of the stations for allegedly failing to renew their licenses. Presiding Judge Justice Akintayo Aluku on Monday granted an order of interim injunction following the hearing of an argument on motion ex parte by Socio Economic Rights and Accountability Project and Nigerian Guild of Editors. The suit followed the decision by the NBC to revoke the license of the 53 broadcast stations and shut down their operations within 24 hours over alleged 2.6 billion naira debt. Later, NBC had temporarily suspended the license revocation. The suit is adjourned to 8 September 2022 for the hearing of the motion and notice for interlocutory injunction. At number 5, Okada riders came out en masse to protest in front of the Lagos House Alausa Ikeja, Office of Governor Babajide Sanwolu, with a plea to suspend the ban on their activities in six local government areas scheduled to commence on September 1, 2022 on Thursday, precisely. Recall that part of the ongoing phase clampdown Sam Wolu had on August 18, 2022 announced a total ban on activities of Okada riders in additional four local government areas and their respective local council development areas of the state. The protesting Okada riders were led by the chairman of the Motorcycle Operators Association of Lagos State, Ramoni Elenio, and a few other union leaders. At number six, the Inspector General of Police Usman al Khali Baba in a statement on Monday condemned the recent trend of assault on police officers and men in uniform carrying out official and lawful duties in various locations across the nation. Baba emphasized that the attacks is illegal. The force spokesperson released the statement. The IGP directed all police commands and formations to ensure that individuals who engage in assault on police officers, irrespective of preceding factors, are made to face the full wrath of the law. At number seven, there was a fire outbreak witnessed at a gas plant near the redemption camp at Moore bus stop along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Fire was caused by an explosion which caused panic in the area as residents and workers ran for their lives. It was gathered that the incident took place on Monday morning. The spokesperson for the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Nosa Okumbo, confirmed the incident. First responders arrived at the scene including the Lagos State Fire Service and the Federal Fire Service to put the fire out. At number 8, traditional rulers and chiefs in Badagri, Lagos State have advocated the deployment of traditionalists or animists to tackle bandits and terrorists ravaging Nigeria. 
According to the rulers, the animists will crush the insurgents using Sigidi and Zangbeto. Tunde Giro, the Dipigan of Badagri, confirmed that traditionalist mystical powers word of external attacks or insecurity. Sigidi refers to one who has incredible strength and power, while Zangbeto are the traditional voodoo guardians of the night. At number 9, Ondo State Governor Rotimi Akarodolu has debunked a statement credited to the chairman of the State Universal Basic Education Board, Victor Labinto, which purportedly stated that the teachers and the states must enroll their children in public schools. Debunking the reports, the governor, in a statement issued on Sunday by his chief press secretary Richard Bulatende, said there was no such publicity that teachers must enroll their ward in public schools. The statement added that there was no law in the state barring teachers from enrolling their children in private schools or any school of their choice. Finally, at number 10, the Kogi state government, through the Ministry of Solid Minerals and Natural Resources, has ordered the shutdown of all illegal mining activities in the state. This came a few hours after the death of two persons on Saturday in an illegal mining site after the site collapsed at Ika Oboyaga in Angpa local government area. The names of the deceased were given as Amudu and Atar. The commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Oying Loye JK, said an investigation had begun to ascertain the owner of the site. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.